right, this one's called Button Soup. And it was a favorite book of mine when I was a kid. It's been a long time. A long time ago, a traveler named Daisy was riding the stagecoach out west. She was going to visit her old Uncle Scrooge. Daisy was tired and thirsty and very hungry. She could hardly wait to reach her uncle's house. Scrooge McDuck. Oh, whoops. <laughs> when the stagecoach pulled into town, everyone came out to see who was on it. Goofy the sheriff walked up to Daisy. Howdy, he said. What can I do for you? I'm looking for Scrooge McDuck, said Daisy. Scrooge McDuck, cried Goofy the sheriff. If you are as tired and hungry as you look, you should go to the hotel. Then he pointed to a little yellow house. Old Scrooge lives there, he said. But no one ever pays him a visit. Yeah, but she does. Hmm. That is right, said Miss Clarabel. Old Scrooge must be the stingiest fellow in the whole West. Yup, said Goofy. He's the stingiest fellow in the West, all right. I have met stingy fellows before, said Daisy. Maybe I can teach my uncle a lesson. Hey. When Uncle Scrooge opened the door, oh, let's see. So Daisy went straight to the yellow house and knocked on the door. When Uncle Scrooge opened the door, Daisy threw her arms around his neck. Surprise, she cried. I have come to pay a visit, Uncle. Scrooge did not look happy to see his niece. I did not ask you to come, he shouted. Okay, there's a sign that says don't come. Yeah. But Daisy did not listen to him. She walked into the house. I am very hungry, Uncle, she said. What do you have to eat? You won't find any food here, said Scrooge. He tried to hide some dirty dishes. There is no food in the house, he cried. Oh, poor uncle, said Daisy. You must be starved. And she went to the cupboard and took out a big black pot. There on a shelf was a basket of fried chicken. Aha, she thought. My uncle is not as poor as he pretends to be. Daisy began to fill the pot with water. Uncle Scrooge jumped up and down. You cannot cook here, he said. I just told you I have no food. Yes, he does. <laughs> but Daisy did not listen to him. She lit a fire under the pot. I don't need any food, she said. Her uncle's mouth fell open. What in the world can you cook without food, he asked. Daisy took out an old red button. She held it under her uncle's nose and rolled it slowly between her fingers. With just this button, she said, I can cook enough soup to fill that pot. Uh, you can make soup with just one button, said Scrooge. I don't believe it. He watched Daisy drop the red button into the pot. What do you call it, asked Uncle Scrooge. Button soup, said Daisy. Uncle Scrooge watched Daisy sniff the soup. Hmm, she thought. The stingiest fellow in the West is getting curious. Now Uncle Scrooge sniffed the soup. He did not smell a thing. Daisy began to stir very quickly. As she stirred, she said, Whenever I make this soup at home, I always use some salt and pepper. But since you have no food in the house, I guess you have no salt and pepper. I don't have any food, said Scrooge, but I always save some salt and pepper for a rainy day. He lit a candle and opened a door in the ceiling and climbed up to the attic. The attic walls were covered with jars of spice. Scrooge held his candle up to see them better. He picked out some jars of salt and pepper to add to the button soup. Daisy poured the salt and pepper into the pot. Uncle Scrooge watched. He could hardly wait to taste the button soup. Daisy began to stir again. As she stirred, she said, I once made this soup with an old soup bone. It really was delicious. But if you have no food, one button will have to do. If all you need is an old soup bone, said Scrooge, I might be able to find one. He took a lantern and ran down to the cellar. Scrooge's cellar looked just like a butcher shop. He had hams and chickens and turkeys and beef. He picked out a juicy bone to add to the button soup. Is that bone from something? Mm-hmm. Looks like a beef bone, a cow. When Scrooge came back with the bone, Daisy dropped it into the pot. The soup began to bubble and boil. It smells good, said Scrooge. This soup won a blue ribbon at the state fair, said Daisy, but that time I used potatoes and carrots. If the blue ribbon soup had potatoes and carrots, we shall have them too, said her uncle, and he ran out to the barn. Up in the hayloft, Scrooge had vegetables, potatoes and carrots, and big heads of cabbage. He grabbed a pitchfork and tossed the hay. He found some potatoes and carrots to add to the button soup. 
By this time, the soup smelled so good, Uncle Scrooge was dying to taste it, and every time Daisy named something that would make the soup even better, Uncle Scrooge rushed off to find it. He ran to the woodshed for onions and celery. He milked the cow to get Daisy some cream. He dug up his garden to get her some turnips, and he carried everything to the big black pot. At last, the button soup was ready to taste. This is too much soup for me, said Daisy, and this is too much soup for you. Let's ask someone to share it with us. Share it, cried Scrooge. Let's pour it into jars and save it. Food is hard to get. But Uncle Scrooge, said Daisy, don't you remember? We made this soup with just one button. That's right, said Scrooge. So we did. So Daisy ran to everyone in town. She ran to Goofy the Sheriff. She ran to the ice cream parlor to get Miss Clarabelle. She ran to the general store for Mistress Minnie. She ran down to the barber shop for Mickey and Cowboy Donald. And she told them all to come to Scrooge McDuck's house. When they came in, Scrooge gave them each a bowl. You sure are clever, said Miss Clarabelle. Scrooge is not the stingiest fellow in the West anymore. Daisy only winked her eye. I can wink my other eye now. Nice. Hmm. <laughs> Soon they all sat down to a button soup feast, and it really was delicious. What a clever niece I have, said Scrooge. She made this soup with just one button. When the time came for Daisy to leave, Scrooge went to the stagecoach to see her off. Come back to visit me soon, Daisy, he said. After all, thought Scrooge, such clever nieces don't grow on every bush. So now, the end. Now his uncle is was mad a little bit. Now he's getting happy. Now he's getting happy.